Yo, this is Devin Walleen, AKA Plant Vibes. Welcome. What's up my plant people, Devin is back. I wanted to do a full houseplant tour. I'm about ready to travel down to Columbia for the next few months. So I wanted to do a video showing you guys all the plants that I have in my houseplant jungle at this moment. And just give a little bit of a quick tip or something that I really love about each plant so that you can think about if you wanna add them to your houseplant jungle. All right, you guys wanna take a little tour? Let's do it. All right, so first up is this beautiful Pegasus begonia. This is my favorite plant for the shadier section of my houseplant jungle. I struggled a long time with this plant. I had it under a grow light, it hated it. As soon as I moved it to the shadier areas, it started exploding in growth, and now look at how gorgeous it is. Another cool thing, it has the silvery foliage on the front, but on the back, it's nice and kind of like a burgundy. This is a beautiful plant for the shadier areas of your houseplant jungle. Next is my Clivia miniata. I have some orange flowering varieties, and these are awesome plants for having flowers in the winter. This was blooming for me in January and February when pretty much nothing else was in bloom outside or inside. And then it has this gorgeous leathery foliage that seems to look good all the time. You can see new foliage just erupting right now in the springtime. And they're awesome for being confined in their container. Look how gorgeous that root system is starting to look. And that's, you know, this is a really long lived plant, very, very low maintenance. Next is one of the hallmark plants of my indoor garden. This is my Epiphyllum hookeri. I have a couple different videos really just talking all about this beautiful plant. It's known as an orchid cactus because they produce large flowers that kind of look like orchids in the middle of the summertime. This produces beautiful white flowers that have like little pink tinges and it's also fragrant, but they only bloom at night. Um, my family and I started this plant from a single leaf cutting about 20 years ago when I was a little kid. And it has just over the years exploded in growth. Very easy to grow, obviously very long lived. And in just a real statement, hallmark plant um, in any garden. So here you can see I have another, I have another clivia. Um, if I have more than one of the plant, that means I really like how easy it is to grow and they just produce beautiful energy in the houseplant jungle. So that's why I have two of them. Here I have this cute little bonsai begonia. I think it's a begonia dredgii. I don't know. It's just kind of fun. Not really much to say about this guy other than it is really cute. Another very long lived plant that is thoroughly easy is the Bocarnea recurvata, also known as like the ponytail palm. Um, if you are a traveler, you're out of the house a lot or you forget to water a lot, this is the plant for you. You can go weeks without watering this and it's A-OK. -okay. It stores water in this cute little codex, this fat little gut. Um, so it's a, it's a very, very low maintenance plant and it has this fun, you know, ponytail, ponytail kind of foliage and uh, it's actually kind of a little bit, you don't really want to rub it on your face, it kind of hurts. But it's a cool plant. And then up here you can see the jade, the um, Crassula ovata. This is like your classic jade plant. Um, I can't take credit for starting this plant from a small little guy. It was just kind of given to me as a big plant like this. I forget to water this one. I don't know why. I think it's because it has this sand on top that I always forget to water it. It doesn't care. It's, it's chill. It's not in a sunny spot. It doesn't have a grow light. It just looks good. Um, and here's a cute little Pilea peperomioides. We'll talk more about this guy in a little bit. Before I talk about the plant, you'll notice during this tour that I do have some of these yellow sticky tapes. If you've been growing plants inside for a while, you've probably had fungus gnats, um, and especially in the winter time. So I'm using some of these right now and they definitely help, although they're kind of unsightly. Anyways, okay. Here I have a philodendron moonlight, which my little sister, she had been growing this plant 
uh, growing a larger one and she gave me this cute little, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it was, I guess she just cut it off from the main mama plant and gave it to me, potted it up, gave it to me. And so this is a one of, I have a number of plants given to me from my sister and this is one of them. Beautiful, it should grow quite large actually. Foliage should extend, I don't know, 12, 18 inches once they're fully grown, which hopefully will be in a, a year or two. I love philodendrons. If you want unique foliage plants inside the home that are easy, philodendron is the genus for you. Um, it's one of the, my top genus for sure. All right, next I have this. This is a new plant for me. It's called the Burbigia schizochella, um, the golden brush ginger. So one thing I do when I get my plants, I, I like to put labels in them. I, you know, I think it's helpful. And when I'm smart, I'll put the date when I started it as well so I can really keep track of how it's growing. And uh, this golden brush, it's just really floppy. I don't know why, so that's why I have this steak. But I got this because I got, you know, picture lust. I was looking at pictures of it. It has these beautiful, like, golden brush flowers that they say can be produced inside the home. So I'm testing it out, seeing what happens. Um, but what I do really like is the, the texture of the foliage is, is really nice. Um, it, it's a very kind of uh, rubbery texture of foliage and I think that's cool. And the stems are kind of maroon. So it has some really nice interest right now, even without, without the flowers. But I hope it gets a little bit stronger and it's less floppy. I don't like floppy plants very much. Ugh. Oh, another thing that you'll notice throughout my houseplant garden are these beautiful pots that my mother did. Uh, she just took some um, old, you know, terracotta pots, and I don't know how she does it, but she breaks up a lot of like clay tiles and then places them on and makes them look really pretty. And so you'll get to see some of those throughout this tour as well. All right, so you'll let's start with this guy over here. This is a Dixonia antarctica, which in time should grow into a tree fern. I don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime. This has got to be the slowest plant I have ever grown. But I bought it because I have some really special memories of seeing tree ferns throughout Colombia, and I wanted to have a plant that reminded me of that area. Maybe they'll grow, maybe this will eventually get to a size that <laughs> looks like the tree ferns I saw growing wildly there. Maybe not, but plants with memories, it's always a, a, a special thing to have. All right, let me turn this light off real quick. All right, so yeah, you, you'll notice I have a lot of lights. I, um, you know, this has got nice sunny bright windows, but if you want elevated growth, you want faster growth, you gotta use grow lights. I, I don't go for the colored ones so often because this is, my de this is my office. I like to have plain looking LED lights that help the plants grow much faster, but don't give me that pinkish vibe. Um, although the pink ones do, I definitely have used them and they do seem to help the plants grow faster than, um, these full spectrum, like normal white light, yellow light kind of vibe. Anyways, so here is the kind of like confusion of the house plant world for a while. I bought this one labeled as Monstera minima. I bought this one labeled as um, Raphidophora, Tetrasperma, are they the same? Are they different? I don't know. There's, the Raphidophora seems to be a little bit kind of like more pointed at the top, whereas the Monstera minima seems to be a bit more rounded. Um, either way, I love both of these plants because they are very fast growers. They really are. They give you that Monstera look which everyone, I mean, if you don't love the look of a Monstera, like, I don't know why you're watching this video. <laughs> I think you probably do. Uh, but this gives you that cute, the cute, you know, fenestration look, like the Swiss cheese kind of look and a plant that's really nice, compact, and you can put a nice, cute little trellis and they just grow really quickly and very, very easily. And they're always, you know, always looking camera ready. So here are my two kind of like mini Monsteras. Um, absolutely beautiful plants. All right, so now we'll go to my little countertop garden that <laughs> kind of bridges the, the kitchen to my office. Um, 
I'm always changing the plants on this on this little section because it's, I see it all the time. And I, I finally found something that I like. I have my cute little agave and this flamingo flower, anthurium and andrinum. Um, what's going on back there? Oh, people in the backyard. Anyways, so this beautiful plant, okay, I, I think it's a, an agave macrocantha. Um, I've had some uh, questions about it online. Uh, I'm not an agave expert by any means. All I know it was passed to me. For, I got it at a, at a Christmas party, a white elephant party, and um, I think I got the best, the best gift of the year. This was back in December of 2019. Got it in Seattle, and this plant is just, it's stunning. It's got this gorgeous kind of like blue, uh, the blue foliage. It's really easy. It, it, I water it once a month maybe, and it just looks great. Yeah, it's got the cute spikes too. I think it's a very stunning plant, and it definitely has an energy about it, doesn't it? You can see it even has a, a pup that's been, <laughs> this pup has been growing for the last two, a year and a half. Um, it's finally like at a size where I could definitely cut it out if I wanted, but I'd rather let it stay. Okay, snake plants. Everyone knows snake plants at this point. I have like 10 of them in this garden that you'll see. And um, snake plants are a requirement of any houseplant garden because they're easy. They're upright. They give that vertical interest. They look, <coughs> they always look good. And they're great at kind of creating a harmonized effect wherever you plant, or wherever you plant them, wherever you have them growing. I have this awesome Dracaena fra fragrans uh, cutting that hadn't been doing anything in soil, so I took it out of the soil and put it back in water. I'm hoping to get some roots to form. So I love the I love Dracaena totem poles, gorgeous plants. So earlier I said philodendron is the genus to to grow if you want something that looks gorgeous, is a little bit unique and really easy. And I love it, but my favorite genus for houseplants is anthurium. They're the most exotic. They have the most like tropical forest jungle vibes of any plants, I, I think, in my opinion. They're definitely not as easy as philodendrons, but um, the easiest one in the bunch is definitely the, the classic flamingo flower, anthurium andrinum. I have a number of these like you, like I will have been talking about. Um, heart shape, heart shape, like this is, the cool thing, you know, I have videos all about how to grow these. We, we will remember that this like Nerf dart looking thing, this is actually the flower, uh, the spadix composed of all these mini flowers. And this is actually just a modified leaf. Uh, we call it a flower because it, you know, it's colorful and it's most like flowery kind of thing in the plant. But um, I keep them moist. And I like to give them a grow light, it helps them grow that much faster and produces more full or more flowers. And um, that's about it. I, I think uh, these are a, a plant that everyone should, should have experience growing. And um, some people have trouble with them. I had a little trouble when I was keeping it dry. Once I started to keep it mo more moist, definitely seemed to work out. All right, we all know this plant, the Monstera Deliciosa. I started this from a plant that was about this big in a four inch pot 16, 17 months ago, and it has exploded in size. I have a number of videos about growing these, caring for these, how to get you know expedited growth on your plants. This is also a requirement for any, any house plant enthusiast. They produce the, the Swiss cheese look, so you know you can look through it you know it's really fun really cool um, they're elegant plants I have mine growing with a moss pole the moss pole you know moss pole 101 the reason we like them is because if you can see this little thing jutting out these are called aerial roots in nature this is a vine you'll see them climbing up trees and those aerial roots will actually bore into like the tree and that helps them to grow up like grow and climb 
So the moss pole actually, you can think of it as like a, a, mo uh, like a makeshift tree. And that's kind of like the benefit of using a moss pole over bamboo stakes, which I love both. Um, I'm trying out the moss pole for the first time and I'm, my aerial roots are starting to finally like make their way in there. And so it's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm really stoked to see how it progresses now that the aerial roots are, are kind of doing what they want to do. So I always am a big advocate trying to create the environment that the house plants, house plants, that the, that the plants are used to out in nature, trying to recreate that inside. That is the number one way to get a happy plant. Just remember that. So another one of like my statement, like awesome gems in my houseplant garden is this, this, this baby. This is an Anthurium vitarifolium. I got this here in Pennsylvania from one of my favorite houseplant boutique specialty uh, online retailers called the PA Orchid Exchange. They have some of the best plants around. Check them out. Um, but this is kind of a, a draping, overflowing Anthurium that is absolutely stunning i think over you know in a year or two the the foliage will be <laughs> getting real close to the floor at least that's my hope and um like some of the other anthuriums especially the ones that we just saw this is a plant it likes it, it needs good drainage and it likes to stay slightly moist and that's really all you need i don't have a grow light with it nothing special it is hard to find but it is easy to grow So this might be my favorite plant in my houseplant garden. The philodendron burl marks uh, has the gorgeous variegated foliage. I have two like completely white, uh, white leaves right now. Um, it's a little bit, you know, misshapen at the moment because I just gave a, I just cut some off and gave it to my sister to bring with her back to California. Um, but not only is it a philodendron, so that means it's going to be really easy. What I love about this plant and the variegation is that th no other plant in my garden really follows the sun like this guy. I, so I'm always moving my plants around. I'm, I'm constantly shifting where they're located in my garden. And this plant, wherever I plant, wherever I place it, within about a week, the, sh the foliage has totally shifted so that it's really like seeking out that sun. And it's just, it's so fun. It is a reminder that nature plants are alive and they're, they're living creatures. So this is a beautiful plant, very easy to grow. If you can get your hands on this, add this. This will be a very special plant in your houseplant garden for a long time. Very, very easy. So this is the only orchid in my garden and it doesn't look like much, but I'm having a blast watching this grow. It's been pretty fast actually. This is a vanilla plant. Uh, it's, um, it's called vanilla planifolia, planifolia. And this is the plant that will produce vanilla seed pods that you make vanilla from. But they say that it's gotta be like 20 feet tall and like 10 years old and so I'm planning by the time I'm 50, I'll be harvesting my own vanilla for my own vanilla ice cream. But as an orchid, um, it needs really good drainage. I have it growing in like orchid bark and sphagnum moss, and it's really been a, a joy to watch. It's grown like four inches in like two months. I think that's pretty fast, honestly. And it's a really cool climbing vine. It gives a really nice tropical edge. I don't like how, I don't like the planter it's in. It's kind of silly, but for now, it's good. Up here is one of my Christmas cactus. Uh, this is a great plant. I have three different colors planted in this. I think one is a white, one is a pink, and one is a red. And they all kind of bloom like interchangeably throughout the winter. As you know, Christmas cactus are very, very long lived, very, very easy to grow. Just made a video describing how to grow them and how to actually encourage them to get re-blooming. Um, I, I think, I don't know, there's something in like the, the genetics. If you give it a spot to really like overflow, it's gonna overflow. And that's why I have it up here. Um, it just kind of cascades over. It's, it, 
I don't know. If you have space in your garden, add one. They're easy. It's a succulent. Um, the flowers are really beautiful. They may not last a long, long time, but I love them. I love them. So right here I have a, a Peperomia piccolo blanda. And I just recovered this from the trash. Um, found it in the trash. And so I'm trying to bring it back to life. So what do I do when I'm trying to bring a plant back to life? Um, I keep it under a grow light. I keep it close to a grow light. When we're using our grow lights and you want to really create like active growth, you got to keep the grow light close, like six to 12 inches max. Um, so I have it very, very close and um, keep it on like 12 hours. I have all my lights on a 12 hour schedule. They turn on at 8 a.m., turn off at 8 p.m. I actually, I also have a fan in here that I move around. It's not on because it's annoying. Uh, it would be annoying for a video, but that air circulation is also very, very essential for really good growth. And one of my yellow sticky tapes is connected to my bro marks. That's okay. All right. Spider plant. This is like one of like three in my garden. Classic, easy, overflows, produces little babies that you can chop off and then replant and have more. My favorite way to use this, I have it as an underplanting in one of in my banana plant, which we'll see that in a little bit. Um, it's just fun. It's a really variegated plant, and it's 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 a filler plant. It's it's a filler plant. We all you know, we all need filler plants, and that's one of them. You can't have just only anthurium vitarifoliums and philodendron bromarks, can you? I would like that. Um, this is a new plant for me. I've never grown a Hoya before. This is a Hoya publicanix, I believe. My uncle didn't have space for it, so he gave it to me. And it has this little splotchy foliage. I think it should create some really nice flowers, but it's a, it's a good, you know, I have this bookshelf for a reason because I want like varied plants and this is a really nice overflowing plant. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. Um, from what I read, they like to be confined in the root system. So keep it in a small pot, let it overflow, let it just chill. All right. This has been a really fun plant for me. This is the, uh, Begonia rhizomatis of the Palomar Prince. And look at this foliage. Front looks like that. The back looks like this. Very maroon, kind of like that other begonia we saw earlier. It's dark, it's lustrous. It looks like it's a prince of some like otherworldly dark kind of like <laughs> dark. Uh, kingdom, I guess, but it's been a tough grower for me. Um, this was really struggling for a long, long time. Probably we had two years before it started to fill out and it's still just kind of like all over the place growth. And I'm in love with the foliage. I'm not in love with the growth habit or how, or anything else about it, but I don't know. It, <laughs> I'm, I'm determined to figure it out. So it remains. My only true hanging plant in the garden is this philodendron micans. Philodendron means easy. This has been very easy. It's been very fun to grow. It's doubled in size within the last couple months. And um, I just kind of, what I do is it, when it starts to get really long and overflow, I just kind of like, like that. It was just kind of like this. And I'll just tuck it up, let it kind of interweave with the um, cord and it just keeps doing its thing. So awesome overflowing hanging plant, philodendron micans, and it's, it has this really like silvery kind of sheen about it. Very, very, very cool. A little bit of aloe vera. We all know the benefits of aloe, using it in your hair. Did you see that video, using it in your hair? Check it out, it's a fun video. Um, I start, these were just little pups growing. And um, I just cut them off the mama plant and propagated them up and they're looking, you know, a little bit small. Hopefully they'll explode in growth this summer. Very medicinal, lots of awesome medicinal benefits.
So here I have a plumeria cutting, which I planted about three months ago. Hasn't done anything. I think it really needs a nice warmth outside in order to initiate growth. But if you know what a plumeria looks like, they're awesome. Um, in bloom, there's really nothing like them. They, they are the flower of the Hawaiian lei. They are fragrant as can be. I, they have so many memories for me. Growing up, my family used to sell tons of plumerias, um, and uh, I love this plant. I hope it really sprouts soon. So here, this is a combination. I have got a couple of different epiphyllum in here. I don't know which ones, but they're really just as easy as that other epiphyllum hookeri that we saw earlier. Um, supposedly there's going to be a couple different colors in this. I have it under grow light for extra, uh, an extra bit of oomph. And this is a really fast grower. I love it. As it's, a, it's in the Cactaceae family, but they like a little bit more water than the agave for certain. They don't need as, as much water as an anthurium, but I do water this regularly and it is loving it. You can see all of the new growth all around there. So this little maroon dark chocolate anthurium is the latest addition to my houseplant garden. I got it at Home Depot for eight bucks. I couldn't pass it up. The, the dark flowered anthuriums, they're my favorite by far. When I was in Colombia outside of Medellin, um, my girlfriend Samantha and I, we went to this uh, forested area where they're, kind of, they're attempting to reintroduce the dark anther, uh, anturio negro. Um, in the forest there, the black anthuriums. And so we got to see them growing in the forest in the wild. Yes, they had been planted there, but it was recreating their natural habitat. And so this is another memory plant for me. Ugh. Okay, a classic, a must have pepper, uh, Pilea pepperomoioides, the Chinese money plant. What, what other plant looks like this in my garden? Nothing. It has, you know, these round leaves. Gorgeous. It's a succulent. They produce tons of little, like, suckers that you can uh, pluck out and replant. We saw one earlier. And um, I have it grown in one of my mom's containers. I, I think that the best thing to do with this is have it in a light, a, like, a really nice bright area. Um, I also water it regularly enough. And this is another one actually like that Burl Marks that we saw that really chases the sun. So if you leave it facing the one direction for like a couple months and then you pick it up, you'll notice all of the leaves are kind of like flat in that plane facing the sun. So if you like that, which I love, keep it, don't ever shift it. But if you want a more rounded look, which some people like, you always want to be doing like a little bit of a half quarter twist. Um, every couple weeks. So, you know, Pilea pepperomioides, easier to find now than ever before, uh, but just as beautiful as it ever was. And over here is my philodendron little phil. Um, not so little anymore. This has been a beautiful grower. I have it in this corner over by my desk and it just, it brings me a lot of joy having it next to my desk. Uh, as a philodendron, you know, it's probably been beaten into your head by now that philodendrons are really easy. And this one is super easy. It likes good bright light. And that's about it. The foliage is getting large. It has some, you know, little ruby red coloration throughout. It's a, a stunning plant. And yeah, it's been a real winner in my garden. It brings, you know, this would be an awesome floor plant, awesome corner plant living room plant, anywhere where you want to have something like beautiful, large, and in charge, this would be a good candidate. But definitely give it bright light. So this anthurium was another trash find. I picked it up out of the trash. If you go to garden centers and you look in the trash, you, a lot of times you'll find plants that they have cycled through and they don't want or don't have room for anymore. And if you add them to your Car, I don't think they'll care. But um, this is one of these new hybrids, uh, Anthurium flamingo flower, the Anthurium andranum hybrid. Um, has a much more like kind of like open, airy 
um, growth habit than the one that we saw earlier. I prefer the, the classic one that we saw earlier. I think these are like Dutch hybrids, but it is beautiful. I love the color, the all pink um, flowers, so to speak. So this has been a, another fun plant to watch. my favorite snake plant in my house plant garden is uh, the Sansevieria cylindrica. I don't know which, if it's any specific cultivar or not, but these ones is like, it. you know, like in the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that one, like the one weapon that was like that, that triple thing is like, I don't know what they're called, but <laughs> this plant always reminds me of that. I think it's fun. So here I have a nice little Acmea bromeliad this is produced, I like this bromeliad because it has the silvery exterior, which is cool. And I've had flowers a couple times. The flowers last for like a year or so. Um, and uh, it's really, really easy. You can go like long periods of time without watering them. And it's totally, totally chill. And they're very, they're a pretty good statement piece. If, if you want something that's really just kind of there and just brings some like life, go for bromeliads. Here I have a frilly heart's tongue fern, Latin name, a Splenium scolopendrium. People have trouble with ferns inside. I've had trouble with ferns inside. And it's because generally people don't le let them stay wet enough. Never let, your f never let ferns like this dry out. Um, if you do, or if you remember that, you get gorgeous growth. And this one is part, you know, Reminds me, I, like, I kind of like want to eat it. It looks like some like salad green I would eat, but I won't. All right, so this plant was gifted to me from one of my horticulture professors. This is the Mangave Pineapple Express. Mangave is a intergenera cross between uh, Manfredi and um, agave so, aka mangave and this plant is really cool because it kind of has the, the the growth habit sort of of an agave but it has the real interest like um a manfredi so you get some with this pineapple express it's got this speckled look in terms of growth i don't know it's not my favorite plant in the garden and i haven't had a lot of like success I don't know, it looks pretty good, honestly, right now, but it's been a weird grower. I just gotta be honest. Not a beginner plant, we'll leave it at that. So here's my Monstera Carstenianum, the Peru Monstera. This was actually the first Monstera I ever had, and this had been growing like crazy. Uh, when I was living out in Seattle, I had it a nice bright, bright sunny window. It was awesome, but then I moved and I had to cut it down. And um, I cut it all the way down back in like January of this year. It's about five months ago. And look at all the growth it's had since then. Um, I like this one because of the texture. It reminds me of like an earlobe a little bit. I think it's cool. Here we have the Ixora javanica, which is a uh, jungle geranium. This is like you see in any kind of warm tropical areas, Florida, Caribbean, chances are you'll find Ixora growing. They have awesome flowers that are born in gorgeous clusters. This one is a red flowering variety. These, these buds have just been waiting to open, waiting to open. Why do I have this in my garden? Um, this is a memory plant, another memory plant. I saw this with my girlfriend in Cartagena and it was her favorite flower. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna grow this one. I think it's gonna be uh, doing real well as the temperatures warm up outside. It should be under a grow light, uh, I gotta admit, but I found such a nice little location over here. I can't seem to move it. All right, so here we have here we have a little selection of Echeveria agavioides, um, my really only true like succulent. I love succulents. I don't really love growing Echeverias in the house. Um, you see, this is just, happens a lot. They're always breaking. And um, 
they, I don't know, they look good. This is really geometric. They're cool. People are always talking about how they kill their succulents. This would be one that people would kill. So stick to your, uh, stick to your pilea peperomioides. If you want some succulents, these are really a much, I don't know, I think they're much better growers than like echeverias inside the house. That's why I have like eight <laughs> pilea peperomioides. Oh, but also those epiphyllums, awesome. Probably the best succulents to grow. Oh, let's see. Okay, so here I have, I don't know which species this is. So this is a musa, um, a banana plant. I think it's like the Cavendish one. It's a dwarf selection, of course. Uh, this plant is awesome. It grows really fast. Give it good lighting. I had it growing under a grow light for most of this year and I just transferred it to this spot over here. They produce little baby pups that you can dig out, plant elsewhere. And I have this underplanted with some spider plant. I just cut this back because it was getting a little bit long on the tooth. So I'm letting it regenerate, but awesome companions, the banana plant and the chlorif chlorophytum spider plant. So another sweet overflowing succulent orchid cactus kind of plant. This is the, the Rick Rack cactus. Um, which one do I have? I think it's a Crypto Sirius something or other. What, do I have the label? Crypto, Crypto Sirius Anthonianus. And this is yet to bloom for me, but I have it grown under grow light. It loves it. It loves this kind of corner spot where it's able to trail and overflow. And it's a real, it's like a real, like, I don't know, stalwart in the garden. It always looks just like pretty good. I made the mistake last summer. I put it out in way too much sun and it got burned. So I have burn marks all over it, unfortunately, but it's been recovering slowly, but surely. Hopefully this summer I'll get some flowers. We'll wait to find out. So this cute little guy, this is an, uh, uh, an olive plant. Um, Olea urapea. So this is like your Arbequina olive. I've always wanted to grow an olive. After seeing them grow in Italy, they're like a thousand years old down or over there. I just, I needed to have one. So this is going to be a slow grower, but maybe one day and when, I, when I'm harvesting my vanilla seed pods, I'll probably be harvesting my first olives as well. And last but not least, is my whale fin Sansevieria masoniana. It's a snake plant, but it's thicker. It has a gorgeous kind of um, outlining along the edges, really, really thick foliage. It's gorgeous. It's much slower grower than the other um, snake plants that I have, but um, you know, anything that's good in life is worth waiting for. So I'm hoping that in a few years, it'll be really nice and full. So we'll see. Ay, yeah, yeah. That was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it though. Got to get a little bit of information about all the plants in my house plant garden. Um, I think I have some fun plants and if you do have any suggestions, any other plants that you think I should think about adding to my garden, make a comment below. Let me know. I, I'm always looking for cool new plants to add to my house plant garden. Don't forget to check out lots of the other videos I have. I have hundreds of them, you know, thousands of hours worth, maybe not thousands of hours, but <laughs> quite a few hours worth of, of plant related content. So check it out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for my weekly video updates. Um, I will catch you guys later. Ciao.